Hey there, battle buddies and healthy heroes. My name is Susie. I'm not a medical professional. I'm just an enthusiastic nerd. And today we have my friend Jeremy. Jeremy Davis is our featured fighter today. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself as an introduction, like who you are as a LARPer, uh, when did you start, what games have you played, and do you have any interesting like highlights about staff positions or characters you want to share? Uh, let's see. I started LARPing in 2007. I yeah. thought you started before then. No, I, I, maybe I did. I, I can't really remember. It may have been 2006. It could have been earlier than that, though. Yeah. Wow. I think it was 2007. I think it was like around that springtime or oh, summertime or something like that. I was 2010, and I thought you were like way more veteran than I am. Well, I hung out with a lot of the veterans. Yeah. Because uh, I, I went to, I started going to LARP with my girlfriend at the time. Uh, was was uh, had been doing it for a long time, and I'd always been interested in it. I'd heard LARP, but I never had the opportunity to go or anything, so mm -hmm. uh, I went there, and she knew a lot of the uh, old uh, veteran players. Uh, so you fell in with that crowd. Yeah, so I, I, I did that. Although I NPC'd for like two years before I PC'd for the first time, uh -huh. um, I just had no inkling to really create a character. I like just being able to do whatever each weekend and not have to really invest in learning the rules. Sure. Um, a lot of people like to get their start that way. Alliance does have a lot of complicated nuance in their options for production, like mm. potions and alchemy, and for high magic, like ritual magic and things like that, that you really don't need to fully digest in order to enjoy the game. So it's easy to NPC have a basic understanding of the rules, and that's where a lot of people start. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what you did at first as well? I started as an NPC, uh, just kind of learned the ropes, got sort of a name for being like the guy that ran around a lot. Do you want to tell oh, us yeah. any more about uh, staff positions you've held or oh, characters you've see. played? Well, the, technically, the, the first, aside from being like a dedicated NPC, which isn't really staff, but, you know, being dedicated NPC for a while. I call career NPCing. Like, you get I, I did that of... for quite a while. Really, in my prime NPCing, I got like between 40 events like a year. Didn't you, weren't you on staff for Crossroads? Too? I was, I was on staff for you Crossroads for a year. So right? like, You're yeah. also currently helping the aisle yeah, I'm, with I'm, our plot. I'm consulting uh, the unofficially. Uh, You're like involved in all of our chats. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Uh, I'm also- Written a race packet Yeah, I, I was just starting to, uh, to talk with Brandy uh, a bit more about the, the cynical stuff. So you're a very good writer. You're creatively involved as well. You like the story part of the library. I, I'm not going to say that I'm a, I'm a good writer because I, I feel like that's, I don't know. I don't like tooting my own horn. Well, I think you're a great writer. Well, thank you. For, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, the first thing I did for a staff officially was uh, when Crossroads was getting up online, I think it was Bill Gibbs, actually, who, who, was, who let Tab know that I was uh, a web developer and to have asked me if I would do their website. And so I did that. And then they invited me to like their staff meeting. Uh, like it was more of a party than a meeting for that one for like just the kickoff thing. And, yeah. and Will told me I had to take the Marshall's test if I was on staff. And I was like, I'm just the web, the sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. And so I, I took the, the Marshall test. And they made me a Marshall for their chapter. Oh my gosh, what a trick. They like looped you right into that. I, I didn't mind. Um, uh, and then that first season, I was assistant monster desk, which uh, is like statting the monsters, is building building the yeah, like, like uh, helping with the monster database. I also was assistant. You you do that currently for the aisle, and it's very very helpful. Yeah, it was, it was assistant monster desk, so you know just statting NPCs and everything like that. Um, but the primary two people that were doing monster desk that year, uh, they were getting ready to move mm. uh, out to like Texas or whatnot. Um, and then I took over Monster Desk for both their second and third year. Uh, I was, I guess, sort of on plot the last season of, I mean, I, was, I think I joined some plot calls in the second season, but I definitely was on plot calls in the third season. And I played one of the, the reoccurring uh, six shards that were, were going on. But I was like this disembodied shard spirit thing that, uh... So like a big, a big stat card NPC, like a big bad yeah, sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. Did big, it have a that, name, or was it like a His known... name was Lamar, he was like, uh... So a named and recurring character yeah. is something that you NPC... And was this before you built your own PC still, or...? Oh, no, no, but I started PCing end of 2008, or maybe it was 2000, early 2009, I don't remember when I started playing Avian. 
So a few years of just NPCing, and then you built Avian, yeah, but then, then you PC. continued your NPC like career, and you got these big roles as recurring named guys. Yeah, that was my biggest recurring role. I wouldn't say I had a lot of big named NPC recurring roles. I think I had a couple others that weren't particularly memorable. I certainly... Now you have Jaeger. <laughs> I mean, that's not a big role yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I um, want him to come back. But, He's uh, a giant pirate. <laughs> I normally, whenever I went to like a far campaign, like if I went out to Pennsylvania or uh, Ohio, especially, I usually NPC mm -hmm. um, just because I, I don't know, it's like far away, brand new world. You don't really yeah, want, have want, anything to do with your character. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, like that makes I, sense. I PC Ohio maybe once, maybe twice. It's hard to remember. I do remember PCing one year where it was so cold. Uh, like the water in my eyes started freezing. I was like, I'm out, guys. I'm going back to the tavern. Wow. It was like negative two degrees or something like that. Yikes. It was it was ridiculous. Vipers are crazy. Vipers are pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I can't I can't say that that's the healthiest thing that you can do to your body, but uh, it was it was cold. You'll find your limits. Then you gotta listen to them. And I was like, I, I remember it. I was like out there with my sword and my board, and like I had like packs in my hand, all that. Like I go up to like I'm like, why why can't I see? Why is everything getting blurry? And then I'm like, oh, there's ice crystals forming on my eyes. Uh, I'm going back inside, guys. Yeah. You, you guys have fun with this mod. I'm out. Yeah. Um, you gotta do what you gotta do. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Can we talk a little more specifically about what about buffer combat appeals to you? Well, like I said, I, I like being nimbly bimbly. Um, <laughs> it's a great phrase. But, uh, you know, even as young as, like, my son is now, I remember doing sword fighting with my brothers. Um, my dad made us like old wooden swords when we were little kids that we used to whack each other with. It was, you know, um, wooden sticks. Like those yeah. things had to be like, you know, don't hit each other hard enough to make the other cry. But Other than that, go for it. It was the 80s, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the, we had our wooden... Good time for fantasy battles. We had our wooden shields. We had our uh, wooden swords. We would like take uh, coat hangers. You kids watch this video, go through this at home. But we would take coat hangers, the plastic ones that have a little bit of like them. You can take the markers, like the, the long thin markers, like uh, you know whatever Crayola makes them. You, you can use the little plastic hangers. You can shoot them like arrow, bows and arrows. And if you take the tips off when they hit, you'd see the mark. Yeah. So you know you hit your brother. This, um, this level of fantasy gameplay battle has been in your blood a long time. I so, see well, you and your brothers. We, we used to do that and get in trouble marker on the wall. We did have an actual like toy bow at one point in time that we, we used to like break the reed sticks and shoot those at each other. So, you know, this has always been in your blood. Yeah, I guess. All, we've always I've always enjoyed that. I tried to get my uh, twin brother to come out and play uh, Barb. As you know, my younger brother. Yeah, you and Brian all yeah. the time. Um, I'm sure my older brother would do it too. He lives all the way down in Alabama. But yeah, but how about like like these days? What about a battlefield is like most appealing to you? Oh, I like the run around. I like the run around. I mean, I, yeah. I like the uh, the excitement. Uh, you know, uh, those fights where you think everyone's gonna die on on the battlefield. Those were. I wouldn't say that they were the most fun because you're like, oh my god, everyone's gonna resurrect. Um, it's a little traumatizing, but it, it can be a little traumatizing. But they also they're, drama. they're very exciting. And like those fights where you're hiding behind like the the uh, the building just kind of eyeballing the, the, the monsters and all the fallen comrades on the field and you're like, okay, go. And you're like running out and you're like doing the, I'm pretending to be dead. The I'm triage this person, thing? triaging people and getting people back. Possum triaging? Oh my goodness. Possum triaging, is, uh, <laughs> that was like a thing. Like my... my so like you're, you're into the high lethality games. Not everybody is. Like, the highly... Like high lethality? Oh, like games yes. that have a yeah, lot of no, lethality. Yeah, uh, no, I... I I like it to be very challenging. High stakes. Or I, I did like it to be high high stakes <laughs> when I was playing. I don't know how well I do with it now because I'm very out of practice. There's always something <laughs> equally I, like thrilling and terrifying about the high stakes. Yeah, I, I like I like the intensity of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just fun. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not. <laughs> and uh, Jeremy's still fine, Jeremy's even if fine. Avian is a little traumatized. And at this point, like I've, I've shelved Avian so many for so many years, like bring it back in. Even if he did die, I'd be like, oh well. I'll just make somebody else. Well, just, I mean, he is like almost level. I thought he was level forty, but he, 
he isn't, but he, he's, he's pretty high Getting level. Up there, right? yeah. Although I guess the new highest level, like the people are talking about the level 50s, you know, that's, I, that's the big deal. Yo, for my highest is like 34 right now, and I feel like I'm really beefy at 34, so. Yeah. What would you say is uh, maybe like a weakness or something you've struggled with historically? Maybe an area that you've grown through in your LARP combat? It wasn't a long history, but like I got into some running, just like a little bit of street running kind of stuff. I never did like marathons. Or, like, oh gosh, like I don't or, have marathons. Or, or not, not even marathons, but like the, like the 1K, 2K. Oh, I do a 5K. 5K is my limit. I would love to get back into it enough, but I don't know if my knees can take it. Like, I don't have the best knees anymore. Yeah. Um, you gotta but, find what works for your body based on what stage of life you're in. You know, I like to think that maybe if I did it enough, that I would get back, I, I would, like, I get past, like, that pain I get in my back or something if I've been running too long. You never want to push past pain, pain. Like, if you've got pain, pain, that's when you see a professional. Like, I got, I tore a quad and I had an overuse injury in my knee, and, like, that's when you start going to a professional PT. I did see a PT for, like, uh, back pain. They, um... Yeah? They, they, they taught me a bunch of exercises I could do to kind of like work it out. Their, their assessment was I shouldn't be having that pain, and outside the fact that they thought I should be more flexible, they weren't sure. They, they said like if because before I even went there, they did like X-rays of my back, and they're like, it doesn't seem like you have any like major fusions or anything that would be causing this. But like I, I don't know. It was one of those things where I had to dive even deeper into the medical world to see if, like, what was going on with it. Oh, but, like, wow. I have a, uh, like, it's not chronic, but it's, it's like, uh, on and again, off again I'm stuff. Sure. Where, like, uh, I just get um, situations where my, my back muscles, they, they seize spasm. Up. They seize up or spasm. Yeah, my, my back will seize or spasm. Honestly, um, like, by looking at you and by having fought you on the battlefield, like, you would have no idea that you have these little, like, injuries or struggles that come up. Um, well, luckily, I don't fight when I'm in that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I just avoid the game when I need to recover. Honestly, that's some wisdom. Like, a lot of young LARPers need to hear, like, listen to your body, and when you're going through phases of pain or learning about medical things, like, take a step back, take care of your body, do, like, prehab and rehab sort of concepts yeah. to get ready for game. Those are, those are yeah. all valid points. So, like, you know, I got my shield, which... Honestly, this is my weakest side because uh, that's my exposed shoulder and that's where most people get me. Yeah, yeah like uh, that side is definitely um, my weakest side because the other side, if I'm using the board, is almost always covered. Mm. Um, my ankles, if I'm blocking high, even when you're doing this technique, you have the sword for extra defense down here, but I guess it's anywhere along my right side. It is, it's going to be the most exposed to being hit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's true for any right-handed sword and shield person. Yeah. Um, just because that's when you go for the swing, that's when they come in and hit you with it. Uh, well, I don't know beyond that. I haven't really thought about it too much in a while. Um, there's so, so that's a fine answer, though, that there's not like any one specific thing you find yourself struggling with or working to overcome. No, not, not You're really. You're comfortable on a battlefield. I'm pretty comfortable on a battlefield. I mean... I used to get pretty harried as far as remembering verbals and stuff like that. Yeah, right? that's absolutely uh, part of the game. Uh, as, a, as a spell sword. I got really good at spells that I needed specifically for my character and the sort of the, the triage fighter that I was. I, I never was the guy that would run out and heal you up the pole and backpack the other person. My, my whole goal on the battlefield was always don't be the most valuable fighter. Your job is to defend the little people that get just totally smoked on those crazy battles. Uh -huh. So is I that like a story choice or a mechanic choice or both? I was just really good at it. Um, the protector. Yeah, I was, I was a very protector kind of guy and I think that's why a lot of people kind of like me, just because like I didn't really care in what team you were on or I'd get you up. So it was almost like a healer in that respect. I, I had tons of potions. I was part of the healer's guild. I'd always have spell shields and weapon shields. Pretty well suited to be that protector role and you would look out for people. like Remembering stuff that was outside of that. I always have a hard time remembering the magic items I have when I had them. 
So like complexities in regards to spells or items are things that it's easy to struggle with those things on the battlefield. If just I'm to keep it all in memory. If I go out as like a scholar, as an NPC, and like then that, it's your that's main my focus. thing, and yeah. I'm like, I got these skills, so like, switching between the two, I, I had some struggles with. That makes sense. I totally agree with that. And like my character, I have a bare-fisted healer, and then I have like Uxwe the Scout, and they're just like very different worlds mentally. You think about different things, and so you have to like get into that brain space yeah, when yeah. you're going to be taking that role. One thing that I helped w with getting overcoming that kind of stuff, um, if you're a sword board person, like I've seen a lot of people do the thing where they put the scrolls on the back. Yeah, the actual notes on the back of yeah, your shield. Well, yeah. but, but you can also do things like uh, put your like, copy of like your character card on there. So like you go, oh yeah, I have that ability. I have that yeah. ability. And you scratch it off. I did that a lot where I put my character card on the back. I use my, I, I use my card a lot whenever I'm refitting. Um, let's focus a little bit on what do you think has brought you most success on a LARP battlefield? Like uh, something that is a strength of yours or a unique signature style you have. Honestly, like you've been in some of my videos already and I mentioned you by name as you moving so fast and making it so hard for us. I don't know people say that either because like I'm not that fast. Uh, I if think, you watch the videos, you'll see. I don't know, I think there's a lot of other players that are much better at combat and are much faster than me and especially now because I'm, I feel uh, like I've lost a lot of my speed. Uh, like around, I don't know, around the time I turned 30, like I banged my knee something really bad at backpedaling in a mod. I couldn't run for like six or eight months and I feel like that was my decline. That was my steady decline into my 30s. Oh, <laughs> it's, hard. Like, it's, hard. it's hard. Overcoming injuries and adapting to new limitations is really hard. But like uh, before that, I, I loved running around a lot. I mean, I still do. I still really like running. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like being fast and nimbly bimbly, but uh, I wouldn't say I'm as good at it anymore. I'm a little bit out of shape these days. Wow, but, you're gonna make me look bad though, because the way I ta the way we have footage of each other fighting each other, you seem plenty nimbly bimbly. Oh, but that's that's just like adrenaline, you, you know. That's like um, that's a good point to make though. Like Mark like Battlefield in, gets in your game, hype like, going. Uh, I wish I was like a little bit more in shape in, in my uh, heyday, because like uh, I remember, especially back when like. Uh, Alliance HQ was on like that giant mountain, and oh, yeah. uh, Caldaria had that giant hill up to the mod path of like, you know, it's like a, it's kind of like a basketball court. Didn't matter where you were on that site, you were always fighting on the hill. Oh. So, I definitely got in shape playing on those sites quite quite a bit, but it was all like my legs. Um, so like just the act of LARPing oh, yeah. in that context added like muscle mass, added some Oh, sturdiness. yeah, well I mean, I don't really bulk at all like yeah. i don't know there's always people that are going to be better than you that kind of thing yeah and but, no, um, then there's always people who are going to judge based on how someone looks and have no idea how strong they actually yeah, are yeah but like I, I pretty much only develop lean muscles so it's hard to tell but like my legs were you know, these things <laughs> <laughs> work horses on the yeah, sites the, the, of those, the hills those were great I, I do not have the same uh level of running speed that i used to but i, I still have a decent amount of stamina i don't yeah. know can you please Say nimbly bimbly again. Oh, I can. <laughs> I'll say that he's right in the sentence when it's least expected or something. But, um, <laughs> what is your strength on a battlefield? Well, I think that my strongest form would be sword and board, uh, sword and shield. I think that as far as styles are concerned, using a sword and board is probably the easiest for most people to do. Yeah. Though there are different types of shields. Mm. Uh, What's your favorite? Do you like tank or rogue? Or I like ro I like rogue shield. Um, the arm like mobility in a rogue shield is very different than the hip mobility of a tank shield. Yeah, it's worth then, noting. Then there's totally like this, this other there's this other technique uh, with the sword coming under the shield where you're almost you got the sword down here yeah. and you're kind of flicking it up and to the right. So uh, I want to say um, it, it always gets my my little elbow on the off side. Yeah, I want to. I've been hit by that very strike. I don't remember who, who called it it, but they were calling it the dragon tongue, and I, I definitely have a stance where I use that, and like especially in tunnel fights. Yeah? It's, it's very good. Because you're so limited otherwise? Well, because you can't get surrounded, well, you can get surrounded, but like if you know that like your, your flanks are covered, right? Mm -hmm. And your shield's down, popping up like here, because like, you don't want to hit people in the face anyway, so like trying to do this thing over the shield 
you're going to end up head, hitting someone in the head, especially when people start turtling in those tunnel fights. The turtling in tunnels is, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you come down here, and everyone's turtling. And like, oh, you can't even know their lights are exposed. So you yeah. just start tapping them between the ankles, and it's just wrist movement. Uh, honestly, most of my fighting, um, I'll, I use my arm for reach, but I, I try, I, I take, like, lightest touch very seriously. Good. So, like, uh, most of my swings just come from my wrist. Mm -hmm. um, that's where that's where the majority of the speed is, anyway. Yeah, like, like, like if you're using strength and force, like that gets your strikes more powerful. But the speed is more about the finesse and the accuracy, which is yeah, really so it's, yeah, it's a lot more like fencing, I guess. Like, not that I ever fence, so I could be completely wrong. <laughs> but I imagine intuitively. Yeah. So, like, that's I think that's where I'm strongest as far as skills are concerned. I'm okay two-hander. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed going back to that uh, Mamari character that I played for Crossroads. He was staff short sword. Oh. Which, I, to my understanding, you can do staff long sword now. Which as long as the staff's only for blocking, then. Yeah. Because you can't. You have to have two hands on a staff to strike. Well, yeah. So you just have a staff instead of a shield. That's interesting. It was. It, it was interesting. I, I really enjoyed doing that. I, I confused the hell out of. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. Well, I was... Well, Does it that defend your legs better? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's taller. Yeah, because so I'm you, you trying have, to think of so why like, you would choose a staff over kind of, shield if you're not striking with a staff. Well, one, I was... Uh, that character was specifically a scholar as far as the card was based. And so I, it's less expensive. But uh, I was using that card... Uh, sorry, that, that staff as my channel or something at that time because uh, gotcha. I, I, uh, I had, like, a F-ton of magic with that <laughs> character, and I threw it all as arcane. That sword and board's always been. My, cool. my go-to, uh, I don't have to really think about it too hard to, to pick it back up. Sure. Uh, sure, it's, it's good muscle that. memory for you now. You're good with that style. Awesome. Would you like to tell us anything else about yourself as an athlete? Like what your exercise looks like or has looked like historically? Or anything you do in a routine that might contribute to LARP? No, I'm not very in shape right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I should have better, uh, better stretch. 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 Stretching is good Stretching for you. Stretching is important. I still stretch. You still stretch. Good. I still stretch. Good. And I mean, you still are a big threat on the LARP battlefield. So even just the act of going out and being being active at LARP will keep a sort of baseline level of fitness, I think. You hope. <laughs> one would hope. One would hope. When if you go doing, out there and you play if hard. You're, if you're doing it like frequently enough. I don't know if like once ever, once a month is enough to really be counted as like an exercise or You're anything. not making any gains at that but point. You'll at, but you at minimum know your weaknesses. Sure. Because <laughs> if you're running around and you're like, oh, I'm out of breath, you'll, you'll know what your limits are there. Sure. And uh, maybe get you to go do some other things. Sure. But, I mean, I think you don't necessarily have to be super, uh, the super athlete, the large. You know? Yeah. You don't have to be. They definitely help each other. I mean, that's my whole shtick is that they help each other so well. But I don't think it's necessarily a roadblock to enjoying LARP. Um, and LARP can actually help you get into more fitness if you choose to take that route, so. Yeah. Honestly, I don't... When I was, when I was LARPing, the beginning of my sort of LARPing career, I was also doing a lot of yoga. Um, and I didn't have nearly as much pain in my back then. I, some might say that's a coincidence. It probably is. Yeah, <laughs> no, yoga's been mentioned a couple times but, now as very valuable. But, I but uh, yeah, I, I used to do that a lot and I fell out of doing that. And, I, mean, I still know, like, a lot of the different stuff. It's just, it's, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not as uh, disciplined in any of my exercise uh, as I really ought to be. Well, I don't, wanna, I don't want this to be an approach of, like, you know, shame or shoulds or Oh, anything. I feel very shame <laughs> No, I, I just want to talk about the variety of lifestyles that are possible. And when you're in different stages, different ways you can commit and enjoy the game. And so, like, you have... It's, it's interesting you have this history of different involvement and this history of different capabilities and like it's not you're still enjoying the game right now even though you're like a, a dad and you're busier and you might not have the same structure or discipline you did when you were running and yoga oh yeah i mean i i love the fact that they're doing all of these like one day events i know i know everybody's super amped to get back to like the full weekends but i'm like eh. it's yeah it's, i kind of like the, I, I get where you, you get to sleep in a bed well it's like you're like yeah, that you don't get that full immersion, especially like those nighttime fights and all that. Like, but like my son, uh, he, he 
misses me if I'm gone for an hour. So, uh, so uh, like I don't know. Uh, I like these uh, shorter events these days. They they help me actually make it to game. That's, Otherwise, that's good to hear. I mean, it's it's a lot of people are bummed that you can only fit so much into a fair day, but to appreciate the value that they're offering is also is is good to bear in mind. Are you ready for rapid fire? Yeah, go for it. Rapid fire questions. So just like one phrase, one or one word answers. One, what's the most important skill for combat success? Not dying. Fair. Any, any method by which you can achieve that? Don't get hit. Be nimbly bimbly? Be nimbly bimbly. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that was perfect. All right, so the most important skill is nimbly bimbly. Got it. Rapid fire number two. What's the most important tip for newbies? Have fun. Great. Don't don't uh, don't let your limitations uh, stop you from enjoying yeah. the, the game. Because sometimes the, the most valuable person on the field is the person that's gonna pretend to be dead and crawl across and get the the main fighter that fight spell or just to get them off the ground uh, so that they can go do something else. Yeah, that's brilliant. I mean, honestly, like have fun is great advice, but the the depth under that, the nuance there, is like know how possible it is to have fun at LARP. Like, just know how many opportunities are there at your fingertips when you're a LARPer. Like, so many different ways you can have fun. Mm -hmm. Like, check it out. Explore it. And don't, don't get caught up in the minutia of all the skills that you don't have. Yeah. Uh, and that can be in-game or out-of-game. Like, yeah. that is, it's like downward spiral mm -hmm. where you sort of lose focus on the things that you've accomplished. Mm -hmm. You focus on the things that you've accomplished and then go, okay, well, how did I accomplish that how did I do that thing that I wanted and how do I do it again like where are where am I making a difference yeah because you will find that you, you totally will like everybody on the field unless they're like purposely going out of their way not to help is, is going to contribute to um, especially those big town fights yeah um, absolutely the you, yeah, you gotta focus on those things. So, a tip for newbies definitely is like the where your focus is, and and, and what you're paying attention to in regards to what you can do and how you can. Contribute. Yeah, and, and like, don't compare yourself. To else. Good, good, makes sense. Rapid fire number three might even be a similar answer. What's the most important secret for sustained enjoyment? Like as a lifetime larper. Um, and you might even be able to speak to it because you did take a little break. In, in I, I would definitely say don't compare yourself to other people. Yeah, same, same you know, advice. The same don't thing. Don't, don't get caught up on the cool thing that someone else got to do or that, because that will immediately detract from your enjoyment. Yeah. And it, it's not important if you are already having fun. If you're not having fun at all. That's still something you need to introspect that, personally. That's, like like you, that's still focus on what your, you want to change then. Yeah, if, if the only thing that brings you fun is like stuff that other people have like you might want to work on that like and, and, and figure out like why why is it that you need that thing like to, to feel like you're having fun but if it's just a matter of like well they killed the big bad and i didn't well what, what did you you know you know don't try to do everything figure out what you're good at and then maybe take a little bit of a step outside of your comfort zone one at a time don't take on everything yeah. don't try to be something that you're don't you know, the whole point is to be something that you're not mm -hmm. and you're, you know because it's a fantasy game but don't don't take on things that you think you're supposed to do take yeah. on things that you want to do because you get enjoyment out of them yeah supposed to do is shame-based thinking and that's like yeah. never healthy or helpful yeah. so i buy that ah, that's that's really great advice i love that wisdom so the very, the very last rapid fire is just any other um, words of advice or parting wisdom that you think our battle buddies and healthy heroes should know. Have fun. I, yeah, I mean, that, that, once you stop having fun, you'll, you'll end up becoming an old curmudgeon. Yeah. <laughs> Try to remember that not everybody plays the same game as you. You might all be under the same rule system, but it's interpretive. Yes. And like people have different priorities and desires. Like, do your best to like try to run the rules, but there's a lot of math coming your way. There's a lot of things that you have to remember. There's a lot of things you have to keep track of, and none of that actually matters as long as everybody is having a good time. You know, you're there to have fun, and 
give the other person the benefit of the doubt. They might not be cheating. They might just be having a hard time. <laughs> they might be, uh, you know, just trying to keep track of everything, too. And, you know, like, don't worry about it. Yeah. Whatever. It's a game. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Good points. Now, official question to end the interview. Would you like to fight me? Uh, sure, yeah, I'll fight you. <laughs> I'll see you on the battlefield.